The question about transport. So pupils and students are supposed to leave for home today. We saw in Rwanda what they are doing is that they are dedicating certain transport means to take uh, pupils or students to their homes. Mm. In Kenya, I don't know how it's going to be done because the circle is not yet out, but how do we help to mitigate? Because obviously if you tell people to go to their local stage and uh, take the, the bus or the matatu to, and take it home, you sort of exp uh, expand the risk should there be any person who is uh, infected already. Yeah, let me throw in a, even another angle. Mm -hmm. We are sending all these people home, you know, mm -hmm. right from the university. So these are the uh, younger adults, mm -hmm. all the two children. F first, for how long? Mm -hmm. Two, what activities do you have for them? Mm -hmm. Because end of the day, we want to keep them Did at you? home mm -hmm. within that environment, not now out there, mm -hmm. you know, socializing, going to the discos, going to the malls, mm -hmm. where they'll interact more and we'll probably lose uh, our hand on this. Mm -hmm. So this, and I'm sure we'll get a directive okay. on exactly how this is going to occur. Mm -hmm. At least you saw that at least uh, day schools mm -hmm. were told not to come in um, today, but probably on Wednesday, by Wednesday, we'll have, uh, CS Magoha will have given a directive how now the boarders will go home. Right. And then now with the teachers, as kids who are teaching at the university, mm -hmm. will probably now be directed how to engage our students when they're at home, right. that we keep them grounded, if right. we can use that word. Mm -hmm. Because again, they are also at risk of mm. getting infected. That's no right. one is immune. Mm -hmm. Let's and, get that right. And, and speaking of no one is immune, Dr. Terry, help us debunk this myth. One, black people cannot get coronavirus. Two, um, it, does it affect older people as opposed to affecting younger people? Just help us debunk this myth, even as we're talking about the risk groups. Perhaps let's begin with that biggest myth that the coronavirus cannot, um, black people cannot contract it. Debunk that. And you know, I think right from the time they started talking about coronaviruses and we saw that people getting infected, that's where I think the myth came from mm. that hey it's not reached any black person it's not in africa mm. but i think that myth was debunked uh, that in the last few days mm -hmm. but even so the chelsea player i think is called odoi he's black he's infected uh or he's covid positive i saw someone else an nba player in america mm. he's also nba uh, covid positive and then back at home our index case, more or less, mm -hmm. again, you don't know her identity and really we should really respect her privacy. Right. More or less, she's of our black origin. And I'm sure the contacts as well, the people probably who drove her to her home, right. her, her close contacts, are, are, are black. And, and what about risk groups then? Are, are older people more prone to contracting COVID-19 as opposed to younger people? So again, Let's first say the virus does not discriminate. Mm. We've already debunked, it does not discriminate against color. Yes. Now about, um, uh, there's this notion that it's only older people who are dying. Mm. So me who's young, I can go out there and live my <laughs> life. What is this social isolating? We are all at risk. Right. And we all have a role to play mm -hmm in terms of reducing the risk of transmission. Right. So as much as the more vulnerable people, and these vulnerable people are, yes, the people who are older, mm. but people who have other comorbidities, mm. other underlying issues, mm. such as diabetes, um, um, respiratory tract infections that have probably been ongoing. And also, let me throw in another, what do you call it, coin into span. In, span. <laughs> we had, in our setting, we have people living with comorbidities that the others may have not yet encountered. That is HIV mm. and TB. Mm. We have very high rates of these infections here. Mm -hmm. HIV deals, uh, deals a blow to the immune system. And remember, we are relying on our immune system yes. to help us defeat COVID-19. Right. Right. TB is an infection of the lungs. Right. Okay? Yes. COVID, as you're seeing, is an infection of the lungs. Mm. So how these two interact, we still don't know. We hope we don't get to know because it could be a, 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 a scenario we've not seen before. But, but Dr. should individuals who perhaps suffer or rather are, are living with um, diabetes, HIV, the chronic diseases, are they still more prone, more prone rather, um, than someone who is not, for example, HIV positive or is not living with diabetes, ETC? Do they need to take more precautions, more safety measures? Okay, let me just repeat. We are all at risk, mm. okay? But now the people that you've mentioned, they, 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 they probably need to exercise more caution. Right. And how do they do this? Keep up with your medication. Mm. So if you're on long-term HIV uh, antiviral therapy, make sure you're taking them because really they, they boost your immunity. So continue with your continue treatment. Continue with your treatment. Yes. Continue interacting with your health, yes. healthcare provider. If, you're on, if you have TB, make sure you're on top of your drugs. Mm. So you're, you're taking them, finishing them, mm. keeping healthy really practicing extra precautions of self-isolation, right. i.e. avoid larger 
crowds as yes. you've been told. Yes. And again, not to panic or not to uh, live in the fear, oh, this is it. Mm. Just be extra precautious. Here's the other thing. Speaking of extra precautions, a Kenyan would want to find out, can I contract COVID-19 from Mitumba? In short, how long does this virus take on a surface? We've seen how it's affected the informal, um, uh, our formal service uh, um, within the economy. Um, our, our retailers in Dubois, their, their equipment's already finishing in terms of their storage, but also people within Mitumba also wondering what will happen. Mm. What will happen to those stocks? And also you saw what the president said yesterday, even money. We have been encouraged to, to use cashless right. interactions yes. because again, uh, from what you're seeing, uh, money can be a root of transmission. Mm. So from the studies we are seeing so far, as we continue to debunk the virus, mm -hmm. it can survive on a surface. For how long? For up to two days. Mm -hmm. two, two, two days, I saw another paper say even a bit longer. Okay. So between hours and days. So that's why we need to really make sure our environment is clean, we are cleaning. So once so Wanjiko on has her, her new bag of Mitumba yes. clothes, once Wanjiko gets it, once now finally this, um, perhaps we are cleared now with, to get their shipments, once Wanjiko has her Mitumba clothes, what is the first thing you should advise her to do? So Wanjiko, first of all, should not be worried. Okay. Okay? Where the time this Mutumba has come all the way, let's say from China, and now maybe even from Europe, mm. it has gone through shipment procedures, temperature changes, and also it's a, a long period of time. Mm. The virus, I don't think, and from other viruses we've studied, mm. cannot survive that long period of time. Again, they need a human cell to be able to thrive and to grow. Okay, that so, kind of puts things at ease yes, now. But again, exercise precaution. You yes. don't, you're not just selling them. Yes. Make sure... But you, the time you're getting your bill, maybe there's a procedure of disinfecting, mm. okay? Mm. But Wanjiku should not be worried, just extra precautions. All right. Yes, Sam. All right, and of course, uh, the conversation continues. So many questions you're sending to us on Twitter as well as uh, on 22422. I want us now to listen to what uh, the Chief Justice David Maraga said yesterday when he was announcing the uh, suspension or scale down of the court's uh, processes and operations. Let's just listen to what he said yesterday. Hearings and admissions of all civil cases in all the courts are hereby suspended with the immediate effect. All execution proceedings are also suspended during this period. Courts will continue to handle certificates of emergency and a taking plea in serious criminal cases. During this time, all judicial officers and the staff will continue uh, going to their offices. However, they, there will be no uh, open court appearances. Judges in all stations will, in the meantime, review deserving cases already identified by the prison, prison authorities and issue appropriate revision uh, orders in an effort to decongest the prisons. Magistrates courts will also review bail terms for those who are in demand. All conferences, workshops, colloquia, and the training programs are hereby suspended until further notice. All right, that is the Chief Justice uh, David Maraga yesterday, and we are actually receiving some news that CJ Maraga has ordered courts to run on skeleton staff of three to handle urgent matters only, uh, pressing cases to be heard on Thursdays. Once again, that um, the Chief Justice has directed uh, courts to run on skeleton staff of three to handle urgent matters only, and pressing cases to be heard on Thursdays. And just to give uh, context to that is that uh, as he gave those uh, directives on how uh, the judiciary is supposed to be uh, conducting itself um, the scaling down obviously is to start today uh, for a period of two weeks to allow for consultations and then prisoners and remandees will not be presented to court and um, then you if in case you are arrested and taken to the police your case will be handled at the police station in as far as uh, I mean in, uh, following guidelines that are to be released today by the inspector general of police that is Hilary Mutiambai all appeals hearings and mentions of all criminal cases have been suspended until further notice and then the execution proceeding have been suspended for two weeks and uh, what will continue is that uh, the certificate of urgency hearings will be had at the plea uh, uh, 
taking place for serious cases will continue. Uh, judiciary staff will remain on duty, but there will be no open court sessions. And uh, in as far as uh, an agenda to decongest the prisons, the judges in all stations have been asked to review the deserving cases already identified by prisons department and issue appropriate uh, revision orders in an effort to decongest the prisons. So there are so many other uh, instructions that have been given, including foreign travel cancellations. But we will also be talking about what the parliament is doing, that is the National Assembly and the Senate. But before we do that, let's take a look at uh, some of the cancellations that have come uh, following the uh, confirmation of uh, coronavirus in Kenya. One of them is that African Nazarene University has suspended its uh, learning. That was on uh, Saturday, if I remember correctly. And this is because it's based in Rungai. Uh, it has a campus here in Nairobi. And you recall that the first case was traced by, uh, down to Rungai. Then Riara University also canceled its graduation ceremony. The next one, in as far as the cancellations that have come, you have uh, BBI rallies have been canceled. Uh, Deputy President William Ruto cancelled his trans -Oya meeting uh, that was to happen over the weekend. The Lua Cultural Festival is, was to be postponed. The Nairobi Orchestra concert was cancelled. This is uh, locally. Let's, let's take a look at uh, what else is happening. At least five Jet 2 flights from UK to Spain turned, uh, turned around mid-air. They were, of course, uh, headed mm -hmm. to the country, but now turned back because of uh, the scourge that has rocked that uh, region. Then London Marathon was postponed to October. The prim Premier League was suspended until April 4th, but this can be reviewed. The Champions League and Europa League matches were also postponed. Uh, this is in as far as the sports is concerned. And then, what happened? The NBA and NHL games were cancelled. Australia, Bahrain, Vietnam, F1 Grand Prix was also called off. So that's in as far as the global perspective is concerned. But then again, as I told you, there's, there are some changes that have also been affected by Parliament of Kenya. Let's just take a look at um, what that is. And first of all, um, the guidelines are that all foreign travel will be, have been suspended. Conferences to be held within Parliament. That is, if in case Parliament needs to hold anything, it has to be within the Parliament presence. The school's visit to Parliament have been suspended. So those learners that were looking forward to making a visit to Parliament of Kenya, uh, not now, maybe some other time. Then, uh, secondly, um, on what... Uh, the parliament has done in as far as uh, the threat is concerned. They have restricted visits and movement. The committees will defer sittings outside parliament and the official engagements have been deferred. What else has uh, parliament done? Let's just take a look at that. Um, the precautionary measures for members of parliament, staff who visited countries with virus infection, this, is a, uh, this would have to do with um, isolating uh, themselves for at least two weeks. And then finally, what else? Well, I'm told that we have to go back to what the judicial guidelines are. But of course, this was way before uh, the announcement yesterday by NCAJ, including washing of hands at court's entry. Um, and uh, <laughs> yes, the entry to courtrooms shall be by days costly. So there are so many other changes that will be running at the side in as far as what the judiciary has done, including the prisoners and remandees, accused persons will have to wash hands. The handshaking and hugging has been banned within court's premises. I don't know what you have on your side, Zinze. Okay, here's the thing, Dr. Terry. At the end of the day, Kenyans are asking, can Kenya survive a lockdown if um, COVID-19 gets Kenya there? Can we survive a lockdown? I think that needs to be looked at in very many angles, economical, mm. social, and, uh, uh, and also healthcare, education. There are so many angles yes. where that come into play when mm. you're looking or studying a shadow. So as a medical expert. But on my opinion, it's a very good thing mm. because we are trying, there's this thing we're calling um, reducing the peak of the curve. Okay. Again, the curve is the peak of infections. Huh? We don't want that peak to be so high that it will overwhelm the country, the okay. entire system, particularly the healthcare. So we want to reduce the curve, i.e. if there are infections within the country, mm -hmm. we want to keep them as low as possible so that people in the healthcare can be able to handle them, right. treat them right. in a timely fashion, mm -hmm. so we don't now end up with um, the events we are seeing now in other countries. And, and here's the thing, let's talk about grassroots sensitization. Yes. 25 counties had set up isolation wards out of those 25, 14 were told to be on standby. If indeed they did, do, they did make preparations, what does grassroots exercise sensitization on COVID-19 look like as a health expert? Now, well, I'm seeing actually there's now a task force of many uh, players mm. who are being tasked to 
now do this gra grassroots sensitization. Yes. Go down to the communities. I think AMREF yes. Kenya is, has been charged to oversee something like this together with the University of Nairobi School of Public Health, where they go down right to the community, down right to River Road. Eh? Mm. We want to see people being taught how to wash your hands. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not business as usual at the moment. Yes. You're washing your hands for those 30 minutes, making sure all the corners are washed. If you're sens using a sanitizer, I'm seeing people using so much on their hands which mm -hmm. again counteracts what you're trying to do a simple squat mm. and then make sure it has evaporated adequately mm -hmm. to, to give you that protection people need to be educated what this isolation means it's a good thing so we should not be fighting the government say no me need to end up. Mm. i'll go out mm. no 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 if you have traveled mm. please observe those 14 days yes. because it's not about you yes. it's about others the okay, thing, you're protecting others. Right, here's the thing. The, the other thing that we have not talked about, now that you've been talking about grassroots sensitization, is that Wanjiko or Patrick, they have a farm. She will take her mangoes, her bananas mm. to the market. We haven't touched the issue of the market, the foods. So here you are, you're going to buy your onions, your tomato, your nyanya, whatever it is. What does that shopping look like when I'm going out? To, not at the supermarket, at the market itself where Wanjiko and I mm. are in contact and she's just from her farm. And yes. here we are talking about grassroots sensitization. And also now you're talking, Wanjiko has already not even, uh, uh, we're told to stay home, she has to go work. Yes, okay. so let's talk about it now from that food yes. perspective, that market pers perspective. Yes, so f f first of all, for this virus and, and how it, it's transmitted through food, so far we've not seen such an evidence. Mm. So again, as long as you're buying this from Wanjiko, you're taking it to your home. Make sure you, you practice the same procedures of really washing, making sure, because there are other, uh -huh. there are other germs. Eh? Yes. It's not just COVID-19. We have true. cholera, we have mm. salmonella, all the rest. So observe the usual hygiene practices. Now, in terms of Wanjiku, who has to wake up and go to work, because she has to go to work, mm. I think an economist can answer us the impact yes. of the economy, particularly the Kenyans who, have to, who rely on day-to-day -day, uh, paychecks. Mm. Again, mm -hmm. how, how do we deal with that? Mm -hmm. How do we deal with people who wait until end of the month? month to mm -hmm. get their salary because now we are seeing everyone flooding the supermarkets right some of us or others are asking hey i don't have the budget for that what do i do yes so yes. there's well, social economic to do shopping at one yes 